Hello and welcome. Now on this gorgeous summer's day, we continue with my summer project, the Sid Boom Box. Yes, even I thought that I was, uh, you know, done with the brunt of it and it was just going to be the assembly today. But hey, I like to make my life harder by adding more features to my project. <laughs> I'm quite unpredictable this way. <laughs> so yeah, there's two extra features going to be added and uh, yeah, unfortunately because I, I'm excited about my Sid Boombox, but fortunately because two extra features, why not? So, let's get started. Speaking of electronics, for you electronics enthusiasts who are into PCB design, there is a PCB design contest in progress at PCB Way. And the winners will have prizes of up to a thousand US dollars. Do check out the details on their site if you're into PCB design and also do check out their services. Now then, the last time I built the um, the VU side of things, this VU circuits. Now as you can see here, the VU circuit, the LED VU and the coil meter VU circuit here. We have some spare, sp the extra space here, which we can utilize with some extra features. Now then, I'm going to do a Dolby circuit today, and that is going to be on the input of the amplifier, the input of all this thing. Now, the reason why I'm putting a Dolby circuit in here is because, first of all, I like the effect of Dolby, even though I know it's not supposed to be intentionally heard like that. It's supposed to be a noise reduction, not like an effects thing. Because it makes, you know, the, the music sound a little subtly muted or gated. And that's kind of, sometimes it's a nice effect. Not all the time, sometimes. Now, another reason for me to put Dolby C functionality in here, Dolby C playback functionality. Now, when you have a tape deck with Dolby C, you can actually, or Dolby B or C, you can actually turn it on while recording. Now, this encodes the, you know, the signal with Dolby C encoding. Now, to play that back and for it to sound good, it has to be played back with, you know, Dolby C turned on. You know, that's when the noise reduction will be way better. Now, the problem with recording with Dolby C is that, you know, it's not that common in amongst, you know, Walkman or, you know, tape decks or anything like this. Now, to play that recording back, which has been encoded with Dolby C, you have to select Dolby C on playback. Now, a lot of tape decks do not have Dolby C. They only have, like, maximum Dolby B, if that at all. You know, Walkmans tend not to have Dolby C at all, <laughs> you know, so it's like, it won't sound great, it'll sound too hissy. You know, the high is the high frequency will be too high. Now with the Sid Boombox aux in, the auxiliary in, you can connect anything you want. And it you can choose for it to go through a Dolby C playback filter. Which means I can basically play back my Dolby C encoded cassette using literally anything. Any cassette deck, I can play it back. As long as it's going through the Sid Boombox with the Dolby C on, then of course. <laughs> anything any cassette player will do because the filter is you know need not be in here it's in the sit box itself so that's a great advantage now here is the Dolby IC itself and one thing which I have noticed is that there is a bit of a problem here and that is that this chip is SDIP as in, you know, shrunken dip or small dip, whatever the frick it stands for. But it's a smaller pitch width, so you cannot actually put it in to this. The holes on the PCB here are freaking too big, too wide apart, I should say. So I couldn't really find a chip holder for this. Um, oh, well, a chip converter for it. I just couldn't find one in time. And one of the solutions I can think of is to actually mount this chip diagonally, uh, you know, with the legs arranged in a certain way. The problem is that it's my pet peeve for this for this not to be socketed or for any chip to not be socketed. I always have to socket a chip. I just have to do it. And uh, yeah, this is I only get one shot at this. I cannot even test this on the breadboard. So yeah, just going straight to the build. So hopefully it works <laughs> without any problems and I don't goof up or anything. Now this is going to be really fiddly if I just Bend every other pin up like this. I know it's pretty ridiculous this, but 
It's the only way I can see. There we go, kind of like this. Now one is in every alternate. As you can see sticking out there. So what we can actually do is just mount this on the underside of this and make it, you know, have two, one on each side and make it plug into the main board. Have the, um, the socket, you know, mounted right here. Start putting the components in and making this as compact as can be. Now there is there are two inputs here. You know, there's tape in which is minus 30 decibels, and there's aux in which is minus 25 decibels. So I'm two minds about that. I'm wondering whether to combine them and then you can switch to any input or what. So pin five over here is the tape aux input selection switch, which is you know these. And then pin 26 is the Dolby B and C or off switch. So we'll do those, we'll get, come back to them, do those later on. Now, 2.2 microfarads, we need these. We freaking need a lot of capacitors for this one. Now, pin 6 and pin 25 are the line outputs. So that's where you need these capacitors here. And 2.2 microfarad. So, you know what, let's solder these in first before we start goofing around with others. So it's going to be too much to keep up with then. To be extra precise on this, we don't bridge freaking thing because it's all, it's all a bit cramped near the chip because of the diagonal thing going on. It's kind of interesting making a diagonal. So the first two aux inputs, I'm going to pin one, which is the capacitor is the input. Let's just make a, just bridge it with this. Pin one. Same with the one on this side. Thankfully, I'm so grateful that not all the pins are required on this chip. Because <laughs> I'm doing playback only. VC record will require more of the pins. The encoding circuit of it. Okay, so after the outputs, we have pin seven, which is this strange network here. And pin 24 which is exactly the same mirrored on the other side uh, of course you know this is left channel this is right channel so let's get this resistor first 24k so i don't have one this is bad time not to have the right value freaking resistors i've got a 20k and a 4k so i'm gonna have to you know one two three four five six seven oh freak it's Quite in pin seven. Do you know what? I'm gonna have to do this on the from the other side. What the freak? This better work on the first freaking go. Seriously, what the heck? To build a whole entire that stupid group of capacitors and resistor on the other side. Thank goodness, 13 is freaking missed out. That's another one that's in inner, and there's no access to it. So I would have had to, you know, do another freaking one of these things. So I'm so thankful that this. <laughs> okay, so most of it, well, actually all of it is done. So we have, so look, the inputs which are here, this. Pin without pin. We have the. Because we have the inputs which are here. So these are this pin and that pin. Combine the ends of these into one because it's switchable. Oh, piss. Freaking, this is pin 5, right? And pin 26 is buried under all this crap. Oh, freak. What have to. 
Oh, you kidding? I've just solder a freaking wire to this each point inside here. <laughs> that sucks. This sucks. Why didn't I do that before? I didn't know this monstrosity is gonna happen, did I? Frick's sake. Okay, let's make some contact. Okay, it's done, so time to test. And what I need to do is I need two separate power supplies. I need the 5 volts for the TADA circuit, uh, which I'm gonna feed this into. Okay, excuse you. I <laughs> need 12 volts for this, so at least 11 volts. Maximum 17 volts. But I'm gonna run it at 12 volts. That's cool. Okay, so let's put this in here. I've got such a stupid bad habit of working off the edge of the table. I've always done this. I don't know why. It's stupid. It really is. Okay, so I'm gonna test. This is connected. Outputs are going into the in of the uh, Tada, which is powered by the 5 volt separate. And this is minimum um, 11 volts, maximum 17. So I'm powering that using the power pack. Okay, well, at least it's going through. Um, now this is the input selector. The green one's the input selector. I got that wrong. I thought it was yellow. And if I let go, it's B. Okay, so I've been screwing around with this for an entire freaking hour, probably more. I don't know. I lost track of time. Um, but uh, what happens? Well, the issue I'm getting is, is that just put the volume there down. It feels like it clips and distorts. There we go. Now what I did, my natural instinct when that happens, is to add stabilization res uh, resistors to the input. Uh, that didn't work. It just kind of like lowered the, you know, input gain and still distorted. So I was just like, what the freak's going on here? So what I did was I added a stabilizing resistor to the output and that freaking reduced it. Hold on. Let me show you. There you go. It's starting to sound like WC now. Okay, the other channel as well. Okay, breakthrough! Another freaking goodness knows how many hours of goofing around. I lost count. It's freaking late now. Anyway, <laughs> um, either way, I, I got it working! <laughs> right, okay, let me just load a, a mod up. Okay, this green wire here. If I connect it to ground, they'll be off. If I just leave it hanging as it is, they'll be B. If I connect it to plus volts, they'll be C. So, with that in mind, let's buy this. Let me show you. Off. B. C. It's working! Defined. I just like the effect on Dolby C on certain tunes, you know. So I just wanted the option. You can, of course, bypass it, no problem. And you can play back uh, your Dolby C recorded cassettes through the sit box. It works, the circuit, but just to show you the amendments I made on the uh, circuit diagram to get this to work, because it took me f some freaking time. So the only thing basically I did was I 
put two variable resistors, as in stabilizing resistors, on the output. Not on the input, on the output itself. Input's fine. That's the, literally the only thing I've changed. So, stabilization is 500 ohms each uh, potentiometer. And yeah, I just turned it, adjusted, and everything was fine. The distortion and the clipping and everything disappeared. I think what it does, it just DC adjusts it. The form was before it was just like going haywire. But yeah, this is perfect. And yeah, the stereo separation is good. There's no, you know, it's it's just perfect. It works. <laughs> I'm happy. So it's gonna be implemented in. <laughs> okay, so what I've done here is actually, you know, put the the headers on here. The sill sip, whatever the frick you call them. I forgot. I knew it. <laughs> anyway, um, I've put the headers on here. I've connected them up. You know, with the, this diagram I've written out as well, on what pin goes to what. So what I'm going to do is put this on the board, like situate it on the board. So plug it in first, like that, so you can see them plugged in there. Now once they're plugged in, that's when I'll... Okay, so that's nicely in place. Let's solder this in. Once we solder this in, we can just like pull the module out and work around it. I know it looks like chaos at the back, but this is pretty complicated. This circuit board, and actually, there's it's an organized mess. <laughs> as clean as I could get it. There we go. The Dolby module is soldered in, and I can just pull it out and. There'll be headers there in order to plug it in. Oh, what a day! <laughs> I need this badly. <laughs> I need to eat as well. I forgot to freaking eat. Anyway, it works. So, thanks so much for your likes, your shares. Do leave your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to check out my other videos on this entire project in the playlist description below. <laughs> for now, until next time, I will say adios. Being a solo, self-made YouTuber without any advantages or favors from others is extremely difficult. So an absolutely huge thank you goes to my patrons for your support, especially my top tier patrons. Electronscape, Axel Dominator, Rich Garbud, Aaron Metcalf, and Chris Sevelinsky. Until next time, I say adios.